It's been a while, but I'm back. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. Essentially, if you're wondering, I've been gone for a while. Number one, I was really busy with work, but number two, I had something wrong with my throat. It made talking very difficult, especially for a long period of time. So, I'm back to making videos, hopefully several a week. I have tons planned for this summer in terms of videos. I have to talk about E3, and there's so much to talk about Nintendo. So I have a lot of videos planned, and I hope to get them back rolling right away. Here, what you're looking at is part of my recent pickups. These are from Rose Colored Gaming. They're really interesting gaming stands, something like the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild stand for the Nintendo Switch, a Metroid one actually combining Samus from the Amiibo line and a Metroid from World of Nintendo, and there's a GameCube controller as well that's really unique and interesting. I really like the GameCube stands and the N64 controller stands because not only do they display your controllers really well, but they actually have the cord housing down to a pat as well. So Rose Colored Gaming did send me these items as a review, which I will be doing a lot more of, and they also sent me some display cases or replacement cases for the N64. I've mentioned these previously. They're really high quality, they're pretty inexpensive, and something like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, the box for that is like $1,000. So if you're never actually going to get that, you can get this to keep your games in really good condition. They have every game up there on the site as well. Rose Colored Gaming, link in the video description below. All right, let's get to some of the games that I've purchased recently, and the biggest one that I've been playing is definitely Mario Kart 8. Of the 25 games I'm going to discuss in this pickups video, 25 games in the month of April and May, this is the one that I'm definitely playing the most of, and actually I played this game to death on the Wii U as it was. Now, my only gripe with this game is that almost everything in terms of the courses are already unlocked. You do kind of randomly unlock different car parts as you collect coins throughout the game. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is fantastic. It's probably the best Mario Kart game. I wish I liked Battle Mode a little bit better than I do. I really wish they gave me some of the N64 courses in this game, but they didn't. But Mario Kart 8 is fantastic. Definitely the definitive Mario Kart game probably ever. It has almost everything right, and it has online. So many courses to play. I really enjoy that one. We're still playing that with friends. I have all the 150cc cups, I think gold, and we're working on 200cc right now. The next major pickup, I got almost all the rest of this when I was in Pittsburgh for a trip. I'm from Canada, but I love going to Pittsburgh. We go almost every year. Now, the main thing that I picked up while there are some of the Pokemon games. So I found Pokemon Fire Red version. This is the player's choice version, but this was just $40, which is actually a really good deal. Mario Kart 8 I bought brand new. So $40 for this I thought was a great deal. I had to get my hands on that. Now, in addition to that, I do already have the boxes and the manuals for Ruby and Emerald, but I was missing the games for these, I believe, or I borrowed them for friends or something like that. So here are the boxes that I already had but what I went out and I picked up were the games for it. So Fire Red is here. I did talk to the uh, manager actually, and he was helping me look at the games and helping me look for different things. So just a quick tip actually, when you're buying these games, there's a few things you can look for, but one of the things is an imprinted number should be kind of sticking out on the right-hand side of these games. The motherboard should say Nintendo on it at the bottom. You can actually look into it. It should say Nintendo. The E logo should be very crisp, as should the Nintendo words. And on the back, they should have the tri-wing screws and the Nintendo logo on there as well. So there's many different things that you can look at to see if games are real or fake. So I bought Fire Red for, I think, that was the $40 one. And then I bought Ruby... Sapphire and Emerald. All the cartridges for on average about $25 each, which I thought was a really good deal to get those ones as well. So now I have the majority of the Pokemon games. I'm only missing, I think, three or four. Pokemon Black 2, the box for Sapphire I'm still missing, and wow, that might be it. That might be all the ones I need, and then I have all the Pokemon games. Oh, Black and White 1 and, and 2. Yeah, I'm missing both of those. So let's continue with my Pittsburgh trip. We're going to go to the NES, and then we're going to go through the consoles, I think, now. Just Pokemon I was so excited about. Hogan's Alley I got for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I think this thing was something like $16. It does come with the box. It does come with the manual and everything like that, which is kind of awesome. This one, you use the light gun. It's the light gun series for that one. I also picked up Rad Racer. This was something like $5, so I thought I'd get that. Did not come with the box, unfortunately. And then going to the Super Nintendo, I picked up Ren and Stimpy Fire Dogs. This one was, I think, like $28. It's usually a pretty rare game, actually, which not a lot of people know of. So I decided to get that one. 
And then moving to the N64, some games that I was just missing, or I'm not even sure. I think I have this. Killer Instinct Gold. I think I actually bought this, but I already had it, because this is part of the Rareware collection, I believe. And I was really looking to get my hands on this. So I've got that one. And then Turok Rage Wars. I have Turok 1, 2, and 3, but I do not have Rage Wars, so I picked that up as well. I think Killer Instinct was something like 10 or 12 bucks, and Rage Wars was like $5 or less, so I had to get that. NFL Blitz was a dollar, so I decided to get that as well. I think I might have this already, but my friends are really into this game sometimes. Really fun arcade game for the N64 that not a lot of people give any time to anymore. I think it's worth it, but I think it's fun. Let's get uh, going with after the N64 moving to GameCube. Now, GameCube, I picked up four games. Two of them I have, two of them I need. So let's start with the ones I need. Bomberman Generation. This was, I think, $18. I decided to get it. I'm not sure if that's a good deal or a bad deal. I need to look up that game and if that was a good deal or not. I'm not even sure. X-Men Legends 1. I already had X-Men Legends 2. This is player's choice, but it was like $6, so I definitely had to get that. And then I think I have these already. I definitely have this one already. 1080 Avalanche, but I have this factory sealed. So now I have it opened and I'm going to eventually sell off the one that is factory sealed. Maybe not right away. Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. This one I got for my friend. He really loves this game, so I got it for him. That was $5. Really inexpensive games, actually. All those were less than $10. Next up, we have the Wii, and there are a few games in here that I did not have already. So first up, I don't have Excitebot, Excitebot's Trick Racing. This one's kind of with the Excitebike series, I guess, continuing from that whole idea and line. So this one was just a few dollars, I think it was $4. Definitely made it worthwhile. Final Fantasy Echoes of Time. I think that was $8 or something like that. No More Heroes. I don't have the first one for some reason. I had the second one. I think the second one's a bit better than the first one, but a lot of people like these games. Travis Touchdown, really interesting character. I think this one was $4 or $5. Then Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. I don't know why I didn't have this in my collection, but I didn't. I can't recall how much this one was, but it was not more than 12 It was a really good deal as well. And then Fortune Street, a game that I think will be highly collectible in the future for the Wii. I do think this game will go up in value. I'm not sure if I did uh, collect this now already, but I probably should have. And this game, I think I bought for like $10. Pretty good deal, or it was less than that. Then Mad World, I bought for like 3 bucks. Great game from Sega. I think I might have this. I'm pretty sure I do have this one already, but at $3, I thought I would rescue the game from Pittsburgh. And then both Epic Mickey games. I was missing one of these two, so I wasn't sure which one, so I picked up both of them. They were like $3 each or $4 each, so I decided to get those as well. Whole stack of games, tons of them. Then I got two games for the DS. One was WarioWare Do It Yourself. This one was $5. And Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, I think, was $10. I already have that one, but at $10, again, I felt like I was game rescuing. Maybe give it to a friend or something like that. Someone local or close by I could give it to or maybe make a trade with it. I love making trades with these items as well. Now, while I was in Pittsburgh, one of the kind of giddy things that I got while I was there is this little Blastoise figure for 2 or $3 it was. It goes on the end of a pencil, so this kind of made me smile. I love Blastoise, probably my personal favorite Pokemon character. The other thing that I got while in Pittsburgh was I was looking everywhere for these Fire Emblem characters. Almond Celica. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing those right because I haven't really encountered these characters very often within the games. But with Shadows of Valencia, or Valencia, which just came out on the 3DS, these were released. In Canada, they sold out immediately. Can't find them anywhere. But when I went to Pittsburgh, the one store I went into had one of them. They were $25. I definitely had to get them rather than paying an insane price over here in Canada because that's what usually it comes to of trying to get it or to import it. So I was really happy to find that one. Now that is 25 games, some Amiibo, some stands. The last thing that I would like to talk about is some Nintendo Power magazines. I'm still on my way to a complete set of these. I'm not sure exactly which ones of these that I picked up in what month or from where, but I got roughly 10 more of these. So I think my entire collection of Nintendo Power magazines, I'm pretty sure I'm down to needing like 18 of them or something like that for a full set of the 285. A lot of these are in good shape and some of them are quite old, like issue 13, 15, 17, those ones are getting way back there in age. In addition to that, I picked up two other kind of little neat things. This is a Nintendo Power Collector Special, 20 years of Nintendo Power, so I thought I would read through that one. That one looks pretty neat. And Summer Games, Guide to Summer Games with a DS. I got that as well, kind of in a bundle set. So that's everything I got for the two months from, I think, April to 
May generally, and there's a lot more that I picked up the next month after that. So I'm hoping to bring videos way more frequently and more often. I really do look forward to the summer because Nintendo has a lot going on and there's a lot going on with the Switch and the 3DS and with E3 and everything that was announced. I have tons to talk about, even the Super Nintendo Mini or Super Nintendo Classic and the games that are on that and everything. So I look forward to bringing you more videos very soon in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to fill that like bucket. Follow me on all the social media links in the description below the video. And remember, as always, go collect them all and keep smiling while gaming. Thanks for watching, everyone.